Hello everyone, this is Mathieu from Evolute and welcome to the second part of our tutorial series about Evolute Tools Team App. In this second part we'll uh, deal with surfaces that have boundaries which is a crucial and uh, often problematic um, case to deal with which is why the interface in the case of open surfaces like this one for example is um, more developed and with more more options. So I'm gonna go through all these new options that appear when you try to um, mesh a, a surface with open boundaries. First of all, you will notice that this time I'm using a NURB surface as input, in this case actually a poly surface, instead of a mesh like in the previous tutorial. This is a valid input, but you need to remember that before the algorithm uh, starts doing the job, it actually needs to start from a mesh. So the first thing that the algorithm will do is actually use the meshing settings of Rhino to compute an initial mesh from which we will proceed. Now, if you want to uh, obtain good results, you might want to play with the meshing settings of Rhino. In this case, for example, you'll see that these faces, these long faces, will not provide a very good input for the algorithm. What you can do is to go to the random properties, mesh, custom, and go to the detailed controls of the meshing, and enforce, for example, a maximum aspect ratio of 1 for the faces, which uh, will ensure that the mesh that you have is, um, is detailed enough to provide a good input for Tmap. Now that we're all set with a nice input, we can start working with the plugin. And you can see that there's already uh, a new interface before even getting to the options that allows you to select which boundary segments you want to be aligned uh, with the parameterization. So you can select them individually and I'll go into detail with them later. For now, I'm just not going to select any and show you why that can be problematic. So I unselect everything and press enter and I get to the, to the input uh, menu that we already know. You notice that in this case, the menu is longer than in the case of closed meshes. <clears throat> right now, I'm not going to look at all the options, but I'm just going to start with this new box here called Boundary Treatment, which offers you two options, Cut or Extend. This is because, in our case, we didn't select any boundaries, and they won't exactly be aligned with, with uh, the extremities of the mesh. So we'll need to choose uh, a behavior for the plugin. For example, I'm going to select cuts and look at what happens in this case. If we look at the result I just computed, you'll notice that the mesh isn't aligned with the extremity. And since it's not aligned, it had to cut the faces that are close to the extremity. Sometimes it leads to faces with four um, edges, but sometimes, since it leads to faces with five edges, it needs to provide additional cuttings here, which is why you see these ir irregularities on the side. And it's the same on the bottom. Now, instead of cutting like we did, the other option in this case is to choose extend, which instead of cutting along the boundary is just going to allow the quad faces in this case to extend beyond the initial boundary, which ensures that all of the faces in the result are quads in our case. But of course, the mesh isn't perfectly aligned with the initial boundaries of the input surface. Mm -hmm. 
in a lot of cases, it's really hard to exactly align the boundary uh, with the input surface, which is why we provided this option. But when it's possible, of course, what you would prefer is to have your result exactly aligned with the boundary without having to cut or extend anything. So we'll try to do it in this case. You'll see the interface here that um, shows all of the boundaries of the surface. Um, it detects the sharp corners and so you can select individually those boundaries. And in this case, it's a simple example. So I'm going to try to select all of them and see if I can uh, obtain a nice result. I'm going to try to do a quad mesh again and here you see that I don't have to cut or extend because all of the boundaries were selected so I don't have to select any particular behavior it's just gonna align my results exactly with the input surface <coughs> This is, of course, possible as well in the case of a triangular mesh, which we can try. Yeah. Um, but of course, depending on the input surface that you have and the configuration of, of the boundaries, it's not always possible to obtain a nice result in both cases. Now, as I said, it's not always possible to fix all the boundaries. And in some cases, you won't get a nice result if you try to do that, which is why you're able to select only uh, partially the boundaries of the input surface. So for example, here, if I can select those but keep this one fixed and launch the command, you will see that the result will be exactly aligned here, but since there are remaining um, boundaries, we need to choose what to do with them. So I'll choose to extend them in this case. And the result will be as expected aligned here, and in this case extended as we required. Now, if you look at the results uh, on the edge here, it's true, we can't always have a perfect alignment, but it's probably possible to get a better alignment, even if it's not exact. And for that, we can use uh, something, if you remember, that we did in a previous tutorial. If I launch the command again, with the same parameters, only fixing this top curve, we can look at influencing the directions of the parameterization. And in this case, I chose to not influence it at all. But I can use, for example, a curve here. I could draw a curve on the edge and select this curve to influence uh, the results. Of course, it's pretty standard. It's gonna, you, you want to do that in most cases uh, with boundaries. So instead of having to create a curve and select it, we created a new option in the case of open surfaces, which is called boundary. This option will influence all the boundaries that aren't picked to be fixed, like the top one in this case. So it's gonna act on all of the other ones that were left free, and it's gonna use them to influence the parameterization. If we look at the result in this case, you'll see that even though we're still not perfectly aligned, which again is not always possible, we have a way uh, more satisfying alignment with the boundary. It's almost parallel here. Now that we went through this rather simple example, I'm gonna spice it up a little bit. And Add a hole to this input surface. I already prepared surface. 
it's identical except for this new form here. Now, if we try to launch TMAP again, of course, we get this new boundary. Right now, I'm not going to select it because I know that it's a case that is harder to deal with than to align exactly. So let's ignore it for a moment and just choose pretty standard uh, parameters here and look at the result. Since we fixed all the top and bottom boundaries, the algorithm uh, provided what we asked. And in the case of this hole here, we chose to extend around the hole, which is exactly what the algorithm did. You can see that since we didn't select this boundary and we didn't use it as a guide to the result, it's almost like if it didn't exist, it just kind of removed um, the faces from the hole. If you choose to cut instead, it's basically going to do the same, except it's going to trim the faces that are around the hole. But now let's see if we can take the whole into account in our results. I'm still not going to select it yet, but I'm going to try to use the boundary as a guide to influence the results. And I'm still going to choose to extend. Here we go. <coughs> You can see that uh, TMAP, as well as it can, tries to bend uh, the faces here around the hole so that the edges follow a little bit better the boundary that we added. If we cut instead, Here's what we get. Finally, we can try to actually align perfectly the newly added hole with the parameterization. And in this case, we do get a functioning results, even though for now, um, the smoothing of the result around the hole is not perfect. This is still an active research topic for the next version of TMAP and this is going to be um, highly improved in the coming releases. But still, uh, you get an exact alignment with the hole and it's not a trivial case. The benefits of this alignment feature is especially obvious when you are trying to produce very coarse results. For example, here, if I put a very small number of level sets, I still get a precise alignment with the boundaries that I selected. This example, however, uh, showcases also the current limitation of the plugin, which doesn't allow you to align the result with the sharp features of your inputs, uh, NURBS surface. As you see here. But this is actually the, the feature that we are uh, currently working on. And in the next re release, those sharp features are going to be ad added to the interface, just like the boundaries. And along with the next release, we're going to release a new tutorial 
to explain how to deal with those cases and other complex cases that we didn't mention yet. So stay tuned for the next news and thank you for listening.